of the packet. This is called electron dot diagrams and ionic compounds. We know that ionic compounds have to do with changing and transferring the valence electrons from the metal that wants to release it with the positive charge and the non-metal that wants to gain it and is highly electronegative and has a negative charge. So what we're going to do is we're going to show how these bond. And we looked at yesterday naming it. We know we do the metal, the non-metal, and put iod when it's an ionic bond. We also found that to find the chemical formula, you find the charge and you swap it and drop it. So what we need to see is why does calcium bond to two chlorines? Why does aluminum bond to three chlorines? And why not just one like sodium and chlorine? So let's look at this. You need to do each one of these 12 exactly like I do number one, two, and three. All right, so I'm going to use one color for my metal. So up here at the top, I'm gonna to write the metal is gonna be pink and my non-metal, yours can be red and blue, red and orange, any color you want. And my non-metal is going to be blue. So I'm gonna have both handy and I'm gonna look at my periodic table and I'm gonna draw sodium right here first. It has a positive one charge, okay? Now, in our Lewis dot structure, we're gonna draw the Lewis dot structure first. I know it has one valence electron because it's in group one, so I'm gonna put one dot there. Chlorine has a negative one charge and it is in group 17, so it has seven valence electrons. And remember I told you that when we do this, we start and we go counterclockwise. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so we see there's an extra spot down here. So what happens is in an ionic bond, an electron is transferred from the metal to the nonmetal. And now you can see that one will fill up the eighth spot. Chlorine is happy, sodium will be happy to lose it. So what you will write down here is that they bond we want to talk about their bonding ratio. We have one sodium and one chlorine. So one metal for every one non-metal. So they bond in a one, one ratio. All right, let's look at calcium chloride. Calcium is Ca and it has a positive two charge. It's in group two, so it has one, two valence electrons. Chlorine, it says we have two of them, so I need to draw two. I'm gonna get my non-metal color, and I'm gonna draw two chlorines. Chlorine has a negative one charge, and it also has seven valence electrons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to make these two valence electrons that want to be transferred find a spot. So this one is going to come down here, and this one is going to come down here. And now you can see calcium is happy. It's gotten rid of its two electrons, and these two chlorines are now full. So the reason we needed two chlorines was we had this metal that wanted to get rid of two valence electrons. If chlorine only needs one and we're going to bond, then I have to have two of them. So they bond in a, this is a one to two ratio, one to two ratio. Because for every one calcium, I need two chlorines. Okay, the next one that I wanna show you is probably one of the more complicated ones and it is the last question, beryllium phosphide. So let's look at beryllium phosphide, number 12. Be sure you do this with me so that you understand what we're doing. Okay, so I have my non-metal that is phosphor phosphorus and my metal, which is beryllium. So I'm gonna draw the metal first. Beryllium has a positive two charge. It's in group two and it has two valence electrons. And I'm drawing it three times because I see a three subscript. That means there's three of them. Same thing for all three. Beryllium with two valence electrons and a positive two charge. Phosphorus, my nonmetal, I know there's gonna be two of them. 
And I know that phosphorus is in group 15, so it's going to have five valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five. And be sure that you also put the charge negative three, negative three. So phosphorus, each phosphorus wants three electrons to fill up its outside shell. Each beryllium wants to lose two. So I'm going to put one of them. Notice there needs to be two on each side. I'm going to put one right here. The next one right here. And I need one on the bottom right here. Then, I'm going to put this one up here on top. This one on the side. And this one on the bottom. So what I want you to see is it took, since beryllium only has two electrons to give and phosphorus needs three, we needed three total beryllium's to fill up those extra spaces. So they bonded in a three to two ratio. So I want you to answer the other ones and then when you're done, I want you to check it with the answer key that I'm gonna post as well.